Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 8-5, solving equations with variables on each side. In this lesson you will learn how to solve equations with variables on each side. What do we mean when we say a, an equation with a variable on each side? Well, the equation 5.5x plus 3 equals 5x plus 6 can be used to find the number of days for which renting a bike costs the same as renting a kayak. To solve equations with variables on each side, use the addition or subtraction property of equality to write an equivalent equation with the variables on each side. Then solve the equation. So simply what they're trying to say is, we want to solve an equation with variables on each side by using subtraction or addition property of equality. Here we have 3x equals x plus 8. Our number one goal is to isolate the value of x so that we can solve for that value. But we have to keep x's all on one side. On this side we have an x. So what I could do is I could tr bring this x over to this side. On this side it's being added. On this side it will be subtracted. Right On this side we have a positive x. If we bring it over to the other side it would be minus x or negative x. So it would turn this into 2x equals 8. That's simply by carrying over to the other side. Or what we could do is we use subtraction property of equality. So we would subtract x from both sides. Right? That eliminates this value of x right here. And it would bring the first side of the equation down to 2x. So 3x minus x minus 1x is 2x. And on this side, x minus x means the x's are gone. And all I'm left with is a positive 8, or just an 8. And then from here, it's a one-step equation. Use division property of equality, so divide both sides by, by 2, so that, that eliminates the 2 and it isolates the x. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay? That's using subtraction of equality. What I was saying earlier was about bringing it over was you could write it again as 3x equals x plus 8. You can take this x here and bring it to this side, which would make the new line 3x minus x equals 8. And that would make this side 2x equals 8. And the rest is history. You already know the next step. I'll jump one step ahead to make the point. So you can use either style. Here is some algebra tiles to explain how it would work using subtraction of equality. And you can also see it here and read the blue writing, the explanation. Please feel free to pause the video at this point to read through these steps, okay? And make sense of it. Now, if you feel like you got it, go ahead and jump ahead to um, to question 1a and 1b. Solve these two questions on your own and then play the video to see my answer. Pause now. Okay, I hope you paused the video. Let's, uh, I will do 1a now, so let's pay attention here. Again, I want to isolate x, which means I want to leave x all by itself on one side of the equation and I need x to be a positive value. So the lesser amount of x is on this side, so I can bring this 5x to this side, keeping this 7x minus 5x equals 2x. Or I can just simply use subtraction property of equality to eliminate it from this side while still keeping a positive value of x on this side. So let's do that. Let's use property of equality. Let me zoom in. And I will go uh, minus 5x and minus 5x using property of equality so I can eliminate the 5x on this side and use it on this side as 7x minus 5x is 2x equals 4. Now, from here, you know it's just a one-step equation. Let's use division property of equality. Divide both sides by 2 in order to isolate our x. And I have 4 divided by 2 equals 2. Now, for 1b, there's a couple of ways that you could do it. Um, it's all in preference, whatever you works best for you or the a system that you choose that will work for you every time. It's 
it's best to choose that one. So we have 3x minus 2 equals x. What I can do is uh, eliminate the 2x on this side, because I mean the minus 2 on this side, because I ultimately want to isolate this x. I want to leave it all on its own. So I can go ahead and just subtract 2 from both sides. So I, it would look like this, minus, or plus 2, sorry. So I would use addition property of equality, right? And that eliminates the negative 2 on this side, and I'm now I'm left with 3x equals x plus 2. That looks a lot like question 1a, right? And then again, let's subtract x, use subtraction property of equality on both sides. That Those x's are gone, and now I'm left with 2x equals 2, right? That 2 is right there. So x must equal 1, right? 2 times 1 is 2. So division property of equality, and we are left with x equals 2 divided by 2 is 1. Example 2. Now we're going to solve with rational coefficients. As you can see, we have a fraction uh, as a coefficient on both sides. And here we have 6 over 5 y plus 8 equals 4 over 5 y minus 10. They were very nice to us and they gave us a common denominator already, so we don't even have to look for a common denominator. Um, there's a couple of ways to do this one. The one I recommend, um, it's not this way, but let's go ahead and do the way the, the textbook is telling us to do it. So very similar to how we completed example 1, we want to keep the higher value with the, the higher coefficient, okay, with the variable on the on the one side and get rid of the lower coefficient. Okay, so here we have 4 fifth, which is less than 6 fifth. So let's use a subtraction property of equality to remove this value or this term, and we also have to remove it from this term. So as you can see, we're going to do uh, minus 4 fifth y on both sides, and now we're left with 2 fifth y plus 8 equals negative 10. We use subtraction property of equality to remove the 8 from this side, because the ultimate goal is to isolate this y. And we have to do the same to the other side of the equation. We get negative 18, so 2 fifth of a number is negative 18. That means, if I had to do this mentally, if 18 is two parts, that means each part must be worth 1. I mean 9. So 9 times 5 would be negative 45. And there we go y equals negative 45 but rather than jumping from this to this what I'd like to show you is you have to use the reciprocal because we over here we have multiplication between the coefficient and the variable the operation of multiplication so we have to do division property of equality but the second step in dividing fractions is multiplying by the reciprocal so we jump right to the next second step these cross reference one another leaving it with one y and on this side we multiply and then divide but first cross-reference these two. Remember, we put the negative 18 over 1, and we cross-reference the 2 and the negative 18, and they become negative 9 and 1. And then simply we multiply the 5 times the negative 9 right there. And what do we get? Negative 45. Okay, now it's your turn. Please go ahead, pause the video, and try 2a and 2b. Pause now. Okay. I hope you paused the video and you are ready to check. Now let's see here. 2a we have 2 decimal 1x plus 3 equals 3 decimal 1x minus 2. The greater value of x is on this side so I'm going to remove this one and isolate the x on this side of the equation. So let's use subtraction property of equality minus 2.1x on both sides right so that this one is removed and I'm left with 3 equals uh, that would be just simply 1x right so yes that will leave me with just simply 1x which is simply x minus 2 right 3.1 minus 2.1 leaves me with just simply 1 and 1 times x is x so now I have to do property addition property of equality to both sides. That gets rid of the 2 on this side, but gives me a 5 on this side. 
So x is 5, or 5 is x. If you'd like to check, go ahead and replace the value of uh, x with a 5 here and here, and solve, and you should have the same number. When I replaced the variable, I got 13.5 equals 13.5. Again, all I did was I took the 5 and I replaced it. I, I put it right there in the axis and solved, and it gave me 13.5 equals 13.5. So that means x does equal 5. It's true. And now for 2b, you can see that we have rational coefficients. And we have, um, so half of p minus 15 equals 3 quarter p minus 3. What's greater, half or 3 quarters? Well, 3 quarters is greater, right? It says 75%, while this is only 50%. So we're going to keep this side and remove this side. So we will subtract a half p from both sides. Subtract half p, but half p will become actually 2 over 4. Now I jumped right to the 2 over 4 because I was I need a common denominator to subtract. When subtracting or adding fractions, you need a common denominator, and 4 is the common denominator. I doubled the 2 to make it 4, so I must double the 1 to make it 2. This side is taken care of, and I'm just left with negative 15 equals. Now what's 2, 3 minus 2 is 1 all over 4, right? So it leaves me with 1 fourth p minus 3. Then I will add 3 and add 3. That gets rid of 3 on this side. And on this side, I am left with negative 12 equals a quarter of p. A quarter of p is negative 12. That must mean that uh, p must be negative 48. But let's go ahead and... Um, figure out how do we solve. We have to divide this quarter out from both sides so, so I can get rid of it. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 4 over 1 and whatever you do to one side you must do to the other side. 4 over 1. That uh, leaves me on this side with just simply 1p or, sim or p and on this side 4 times negative 12 is negative 48. And now let's, let's take our skills to solve some verbal problems. In some real world situations, you are asked to determine when the cost of two different products or services will be equal. This often results in an equation with variables on each side. So we might get two different situations and they're both um, increasing or decreasing and we want to find out when they will both be equal. Right, so let's see over here. This is how this would apply in real world context. A personal trainer charges a one-time fee of $60 plus $25 for each individual session. A fitness club charges a yearly fee of $450 plus $10 for each session with a personal trainer. Write and solve an equation to determine what number of sessions the cost will be equal. So you see a one-time payment of $60 to sign up and then $25 each time or a one-time payment of $450 and $10 each time. At one point, both of these will match up depending on the number of the number of sessions purchased. And that's what our, our variable will, will be, the number of sessions. So let's see here. Zoom in. So we're going to let S be our variable. S will be the number of sessions. So like I said, $60 up front plus $25 for every personal training session or $450 up front and $10 per session. We solve. Um, now notice that this side has the lesser variable number of uh, the coefficient. It's a lower coefficient, so we're going to keep this coefficient. We'll get rid of this one, the lower one. Always get rid of the lower one because you want to be left with a positive coefficient. Okay, so then minus 10s, minus 10s, we're left here with, we want to remove the 60, which bring us down to 390, 15s. So 15 sessions equals 390. How much would it be? How many sessions do we have to do it? it we need 26 sessions. When you get 26 sessions at this rate and 26 at this rate, that's when they will both be the same cost. So you have to get at least 26 sessions in for them to be equal. 
you would need to have 26 training sessions in order for the cost to be equal. Okay, well let's try this one. Number three, let's read it together and then pause to try to solve it on your own and then check your answer when by pressing play. Redbird Cruises charges $85 per day plus a one-time fee of $75. That looks to me like it's going to be $75 plus $85 plus dollars per day. I'm going to use D as my variable because it's per day. King Cruises charges $100 per day, $100 per day, and a fee of $30. You see, that's what I write it right here. Write and solve an equation to determine for what number of days the charge for the cruises will be the same. There it is. As I read it, I wrote it out, and I hope that made sense to you. Which side has the higher coefficient? This side. So I, I want to keep this side because I want my coefficient to be positive when it's all said and done. So I'm going to get rid of this, this side. And the way to do that is through subtraction property of equality. So I'm going to do subtraction property of equality on this side as well, 85D. This is gone, leaving with just 75, right? And on this side, I have 15D plus 30. I'm going to subtract 30. Subtract 30. It's gone from this side, leaving me with my 15D equals, um, that would be, let me think here, 40, 35, right? No, 45, sorry. 45 and 15 times a number is 45 that would mean 3 but let's just go ahead and use division property of equality so you can see for yourself the answer and this leaves me with 1d so just simply d and 45 divided by 15 is 3 so in 3 days right 3d in 3 days they would equal remember that a word problem needs to be answered with a therefore statement. Therefore, the price of the cruises will be the same at three days. Well, that is it for every that is all for today. I will see you next class, everyone.